Hello everyone. So um, I'm Irish Dominado from AFA and we'd like to um, get to know who are here, who are present with us, who are joining this webinar. So there will be a Zoom poll um, that will be flashed on your screen. Please um, answer the questions. Thank you. There are several questions here. Yeah, first, uh, which age group do you belong to? And um, what is your uh, gender? And um, also we want to know uh, which sector you, you belong to. And um, finally, yeah, what uh, stakeholder group um, do you represent? Uh, and there's a fifth question, where are you joining us from? So majority of uh, our participants are from the age group 31 to 50 years old. And um, there, there are also a lot from the 51 to 65 years old um, age group. And of course, we have also the youth joining us that um, we have around 8%. And um, there are a lot of uh, females. We have more females uh, than male joining this webinar. And of course, there are um, majority are from the agriculture sector. They are from uh, agroforestry, food industry, and we also have um, participants from the academe or from education sector, and also from the government and um, financial services. And we also have uh, participants from international NGOs and development partners. And uh, majority, around 64% of the participants are from the Southeast Asia, but we also have uh, participants from East Asia, South Asia, the Pacific Islands, and we have from Africa. So um, we'll end the poll here and uh, back to you, Ms. Burton. Thank you very much. So good afternoon, everyone. We are very pleased to see everyone here. Uh, I think we are coming from several countries across Asia. 
So for some of us, it might be still good morning, but for our friends in the Pacific, it's already good evening. And for most uh, who are coming from Southeast Asia and South Asia, it's probably good afternoon. So welcome everyone. We are very happy to see you again. And it's very timely that we have this discussion right now. Uh, I'm not going to share anymore, but here in the Philippines, just last night during the news, uh, we were uh, we were saddened by this uh, event up north in a, in in the Philippines, where tons of tomatoes are now being wasted. Uh, even if you give them for free to people, uh, to your neighbors, to to people around, uh, nobody would accept it anymore because there is just an overflow of supply. So this is one very good example and very timely that we are discussing this. And we know for a fact that when the COVID-19 pandemic set in, there, there has been a lot of food wastage because of the blocks in transportation and the limitation in mobility. So this is a very welcome discussion right now, and it is very timely. So uh, we now proceed. Uh, let me share my screen first so I can introduce uh, I can share with you first. Uh, okay. Okay. So for this afternoon, uh, as uh, we already know, our topic for this is the farmers and fishers solution. Uh, we would like to see how we really can um, put a solution or address the issue of spoilage and wastage in our. Um, crops no so it's uh it's really heartbreaking to see uh crops being wasted being put to waste being thrown away just like that after the farmers fishers and agricultural producers have put all their love and effort for producing these products then it's uh really sad to see them go to waste so now uh, we are having this uh we are having this uh event to have an idea how this can be addressed. And there are already successful organizations who have been doing a lot of interventions to address this issue. So uh, I think Esther will be discussing more on the objective of this one. So our event will be from now until 5.30 this afternoon. So in the Pacific, that would be already evening. Uh, we will try to manage the time. So I would like to, call on the um, our speakers that at the strike of eight minutes, because you will be given 10 minutes each, I will be calling your attention and just say uh, la la last two minutes so that you can wind up your presentation. So, okay, so for our official opening, let me welcome and let, let me give you uh, Ms. Esther Penunya, no less than the Secretary General of Asian Farmers Association, so to give us the opening and welcome. So Esther, the floor is yours. Thank you, Bernie, and good afternoon to colleagues in Asia. Good morning to friends in Europe and Africa, and good evening to friends in Pacific. Welcome to this event. Our organization, AFA, is happy to partner with Covestro for this our first ever webinar on food loss and waste. Whenever the subject food loss and waste comes to the fore, I am reminded of my younger years. When as a child with seven siblings, my mother would always say to us, don't waste your food, finish your food, people are hungry. In my young mind then, I could not understand why not finishing my food would cause hunger to other people. Would they, be, would they be able to eat if I eat this would be my argument. Though I know that if I don't finish mine, my younger siblings would get or grab my food and a fight will ensue. Now much older and working with farmers organizations and with active engagement in discussions on food systems, I realized that what my mother said was actually science and evidence-based. Food loss and waste is a big issue. About 30% of food produced for human consumption globally is lost or wasted somewhere along the processes of production, processing, marketing, and consumption. 
the current global population of 7 billion can increase to 9 billion in 2050. And with finite resources to make food, reducing food loss and waste will significantly respond to the need for more food or food security. Plus, as we have learned in Economics 101 or Economics 11, the law of supply and demand is real. If we have more food than what we can eat, food prices can drop and be affordable to poorer consumers. Food loss and waste is defined as a decrease in the quantity and quality of edible food that is intended for human consumption. It is important to distinguish food loss and food waste and the circumstances of their occurrence, especially when identifying causes and developing solutions and interventions to address these issues. Food loss is mainly caused by the malfunctioning of the food production and supply system or its institutional and policy framework. This includes lack of proper storage facilities, cold chain, proper food handling practices, infrastructure, packaging, or efficient marketing systems. I remember in the early months of the COVID-19 lockdown in Asia last year, Filipino tomato and cabbage farmers were dumping their produce on the streets because they could not bring their product to the capital due to travel restrictions. Or cabbage farmers from Laos complaining that their cabbages are rotting in their fields because there was no buyer. And like Bernie said at the opening, we are saddened that this is happening again with Filipino tomato farmers just last night. On the other hand, food waste refers to the removal from the food supply chain of food, which is still fit for human consumption. This is done either by choice, like not finishing the food on your plate, or after the food is spoiled or expired and you throw it away. You know? And I am guilty of this because every time I clean my ref, there is always spoiled food. So where does food loss and food waste happen? Food loss usually take place during production, post-harvest and processing stages, while food waste happen at the consumption level with the retailers and the consumers. As family farmers involved in production processes, and through our cooperatives and associations, our commodity clusters are involved in post-production, processing, and marketing. And also as consumers, because we eat and buy food, we as individuals and as organizations have a big and significant role to play in reducing food loss and waste. And our member and partner organizations are up to this challenge. AFFM in Myanmar process nearly spoiled fruits and vegetables into soap. The shortened shelf life of produce, Sewa of India, Pakisama in Philippines, the Fiji Training Center in Fiji, the LFF in Sri Lanka, Coast BD in Bangladesh has processed their cereals, fruits, vegetables, spices, pulses, and fish, either through dehydration and drying techniques, as well as processing into jams, chips, powder, and flour. And LFN in Laos has also established zero energy cool storage system. In this event, we will listen to six succinct and interesting presentations followed by breakout sessions in order for us to share our challenges, our initiatives, our learnings on food loss and waste. We hope that after this event, we have some concrete action points on how to help reduce food loss and waste in our homes, in our organizations, and cooperatives. For me, as my family try to do agroecological living, it is to upgrade vermicomposting for our kitchen and farm field waste, better drying techniques for our blue tainate and oregano leaves, and always check the ref for leftovers before cooking. What will be yours? We hope this meeting will help you reflect how. Thank you for being with us today. We all look forward to an engaging discussion and good day to everyone. Back to you, Bernie. Okay. Thank you so much, Esther, for putting the context and inspiring us some more on the importance of our topic this afternoon. So uh, without further ado, uh, let me introduce to you the next speaker who is going to present to us 
the solar dryer technology as one of the interventions to convert food loss and waste into value. And we have um, we have been to Thailand for to see exact uh, exactly how it is being done. And uh, I can still remember how bananas would really savor and savor the taste of the uh, dried bananas coated with chocolates or not coated with chocolates. They're so perfect. And to share with us uh, this, uh, let us welcome Miss Ada Hua. So Miss Ada, you are, you are now on the limelight. Please take the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, should I share my presentation from my end? Um, would you like to, or we can also do that for you? Would uh, you prefer to share it on your own? Yeah, I think I will try to share my own. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, Bernie and uh, Esther, I think uh, you have said a lot of things I was uh, about uh, to say. Uh, definitely, this is a very important moment for us to discuss the food uh, uh, loss and waste. And uh, like Esther mentioned, we have to distinguish what is a food loss and what is a food waste, right? So there are different technologies and the processing um, techniques that we can help on this uh, issue and further contribute uh, to the climate change. And then I will slowly come to the point. So if we look at uh, particularly the post-harvest uh, loss, yeah, globally, actually 45% of the fruits and the vegetables are lost. And, and also 45% uh, of roots and the tubers are lost. And then that goes to 35% of fish and the seafood. I have put up uh, a table on the left-hand side as to compare different uh, um, continents and markets and where the food loss and waste are happening. So if you look at Europe and uh, North uh, America, these are more uh, developed countries. You will see that uh, the food waste and the loss mainly happen that is actually have a big proportion uh, at the consumer ends. And then, of course, there is a food waste and a loss from a production to retailing. So the percentage is uh, the difference in their percentages are rather small. However, if you look at um, uh, Southeast Asia, for example, yeah, um, this is very obvious to us that from production to retailing, the food waste and the loss is significantly higher in percentage comparing to the occurrence at the consumer end. What does that mean? That actually tells us that we really need to improve our post-harvest uh, food loss because normally the waste happens at the, the consumer end, but then the loss happens before the food uh, will reach to the consumers. Um, why is it important that we need to improve the post-harvest management? First of all, from the people perspective, this will really strengthen the livelihood for the farmers and the families who dependent on the agriculture for the income. Yeah, less loss and waste, less loss here, that means more income for them. And for the planet, the climate change has a strong impact on the food industry. And then when more food are lost in the field, that means more uh, carbon, um, emission into the atmosphere that does not uh, contribute to our planet. So if we look at the profit, food loss prevention is not only to reduce the loss, but how can we further process the food so that they have a higher value? I think today we have a very interesting talks uh, from Covestro's uh, regional partners. They will mention about not only the techniques that we can use, but also how can we do um, branding? How can we do better processing? How can we focus on organic farming uh, in order to have a higher value for our produce? 
when we focus on um, Asia Pacific, uh, and the Pacific, yeah, 50% of the population resides in this area. But then the inefficient and the inappropriate post-harvest management leads to from 20% to 50% losses along the post-harvest value chain in ASEAN alone. That is equivalent to over 100 million tons of food production loss, or roughly US dollar 5 billion of value. So what could be the solution? I'm not saying that this is the only solution out there to help, but this is one of the pollutions that the Covestro has worked tirelessly with our partners in the region to promote. So let me introduce you to the solar dryer dome technology. Um, we have uh, successfully implemented uh, this intervention in different uh, market uh, countries around uh, Southeast Asia and also in South um, um, Asia, um, such as uh, India and uh, Nepal. Um, so this is a very mature technology that we have been promoting in order to have a better post-harvest management. So we, uh, as the uh, solar dryer um, technology, was also awarded as an efficient solution by the Solar Impulse Foundation for 2019. This solution will reduce the food loss by hygienic drying, reduce the fungus, and, a long, uh, and a longer, uh, to promote a longer storage so that uh, there is a life uh, span that is uh, longer for uh, the produce. Um, and then this will increase the dried product quality um, such value. So when you dry it in a more hygienic way into a better quality, then you will generate more value on your produce. And then that also means the increased income. Um, solar dryer is a seemingly very simple technology, which is also true because it is a, a very low maintenance uh, required technology. Um, so as you can see, the technology itself is an installation based on a specially formulated cement floor, which provides a better reflection um, to the whole device. And it is covered by Covestro's material that is guaranteed for lasting at least 10 years. And then we have this uh, um, iron frame to support the whole ins uh, installation that is also powered through the solar panels for the ventilation system. What can the solar dryer actually do? One of the most important features of a solar dryer is improving the efficiency and the productivity of uh, solar drying. So traditionally, um, we put the produce uh, uh, along the roadside for drying under the sun. Um, if you compare uh, different produce on my slides, you will see a significant improvement in efficiency. Yeah, and then you can also test the moisture content on different produce after the drying time. So we will see a significant uh, improvement in the efficiency gain uh, from very from 33% uh, up to even on um, 70%, depending on uh, your produce that you are drying. Um, so why is it important? As I have started mentioning, um, having a better post-harvest uh, management does not only mean that we dry our produce and that is it. This definitely helps on the reduction of food loss. But how can we do better uh, besides prevention of the loss? That is to actually add value to our produce. Last two minutes. Okay. Uh, I think I'm okay. Um, as uh, uh, Bernie just mentioned that she has been to Thailand, she has seen the product uh, that is from dried banana with a nicer packaging, with a chocolate dipping, and these are all value add to the produce. So from a, a single fresh banana surprise to a, a nicely boxed uh, uh, a banana, there is a significant improvement in its price. So solar dry has been widely used uh, in different uh, productions. I'm showing you on my screen the different samples, such as uh, cacao. 
And then you can further produce uh, or process the cacao into uh, different end applications. And then, of course, the coffee. So we have uh, coffee farmers in Vietnam uh, utilizing solar dryers that help them to increase the coffee beans price for um, three to four times higher than before. Then, of course, you can further process coffee. Banana, as I just mentioned, as you can see the differences uh, in the open air drying and also the solar drying. And then you can also process the banana into uh, different produce. Um, pineapple here. And then you can make a pineapple jam. And of course, you can also uh, make a pineapple wine, uh, such as also mango, uh, dried mango. I think everyone is very familiar. Um, and also solar dryer can be also used in um, high value um, spices such as uh, chili and also seafood. So it is uh, actually a very versatile application of a solar dryer. Um, and then as I have mentioned, it is only the start to reduce the food loss, but also it is the stepping stone for adding value to your, uh, for your future um, products where you can also tackle not only the domestic, but also the export market. And uh, Covestro is not only the provider for this uh, technology, we also partner with uh, our partners uh, in the region uh, to provide the capacity building. Um, so I will um, hand this back to Bernie, and then I hope you enjoy the sharing from our partners in the region. Thank you. Thank you, Ada. You ju you're just right in time. No? So, okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Um, now, be it is our it has been our tradition to have um, a short uh, test, a quiz. So let's see if we were able to capture this. Okay. Type on your chat box if the statement that I will say is true or false. Fruits, vegetables roots and tubers loss is marked at 45%. So is it true or false? Please type on the chat box if the answer is true or false. Okay, so thank you so much, Ada. And uh, we will now go on to the success stories and we will be able to listen. Our true, uh, our next speaker is from Green Living and we've been to her farm and it was wonderful. I think it was in 2018 when we were able to, to visit uh, the Green Living Camp in Thailand. So without further ado, let us all welcome Ms. Kulnati Suparat Charpun to share with us the experience of Green Living Camp. Uh, take away, Ms. Kul, uh, Ms. I'm sorry if I did not pronounce it well. Ms. Kulnati, yeah, the floor yeah. is yours. Yeah. Hi. Hello. I'm so sorry. Hi. Yes. Hi. I'm back. Yeah. Thank you, Bernie. Yeah. Thank you for your reminding me with your videos. I'm quite surprised. Some of you have visited us maybe three years ago. Yeah. And um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to share my experience in doing uh, organic farming and um, exporting and drying products today. Yeah, I'm happy. So um, may I start um, to share my screen, Bunny? Yes, please. Uh, I think it is, uh, you are now allowed to share your screen. Hello, yeah, okay, I'm ready. Okay, Green Living Camp. Hello, I'm you. 
from Green Living Camp, Thailand. We are a small organic farm located in central of Thailand. We have made international organic standards for over 10 years. Let me take off you to visit our market and uh, then back to the farm to see how we run organic farm and our processing unit. First of all, I would like to show you a chat video to tell more about us and our organic dry bananas. Welcome to our family's Green Living Camp Farm, where the famous Blue Orchid brand sun dried bananas are grown. Green Living Camp, aka GLC, is 100% certified organic by various internationally recognized government agencies, including USDA, International Federation of Organic Agricultural Movements, Thai FDA, Canada Organic, and EU Organic. DLC is a rural farm located in South Central Thailand. The climate is tropical with plentiful rain and sun, ideal for growing bananas. DLC and Land of Simple Treasures are collaborating to grow and sell the Orchid brand and sun dried bananas using only organic and sustainable farming methods. Together, our mission is to provide wholesome organic food to consumers around the world, at the same time preserving the natural ecosystem of wildlife and plants. Some of the positive byproducts of our farm are providing jobs for some of the local people that would otherwise have difficulties finding employment. We also teach our sustainable agricultural methods and requirements to farmers who strive to be certified organic. We naturally dry our bananas using a parabola solar moon that used to be abundant sunshine is so prevalent in this part of the world. The process and facility is routinely inspected for sanitation and quality control to ensure the utmost food safety and the wholesome goodness is inspected by our customers. One hundred percent organic, with uh, no chemicals, no herbicides, no pesticides, no fertilizers. Uh, great for our customer; they really appreciate it. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. With many thanks to Covesto, actually, we pro who provide some part of video. Um, our major market are online, most in Amazon and eBay in the USA. Uh, this video actually published in Amazon website. We expand our market to Amazon Canada and Amazon Singapore as well. This is our shop on Amazon under brand Brew Orchid Organic. We sell only USDA certifying product and 100% are produced from our farm. Not only organic certificates, including USDA, Canada Organic, EU Organic, and iPhone that guarantee the real organic products to the customer. We are also meet good manufacturing practice from Thai FDA to assure that our products are safe and high in quality. We are also proudly present QR code for organic traceability. Thanks to Thai Ministry of Commerce who developed this traceability blockchain for organic farmer. We generate QR code for every lot 
and label it on the package in order to let the customer trace back where the organic product on their hand came from. Now let's back to the farm. We start our organic farm with rice and banana. This year, we grew more than 1,000 bananas. Let's see where did we grow them. We grow banana along the rice paddy with mango, with dragon fruit, with hibiscus, uh, with bamboo, and tamarind. We grow several kinds of plants for biological diversity, which is an important practice to make ecos ecosystem. To be integrated farm, it helps us to reduce harmful insects and disease. In addition, when we face climate change, diversity help us to be a lower risk because some plants were impact, whereas some were not. Next photo will show you how ecosystem balance in our farm. You see, birds reserve our banana. We had no choice, just give her that whole bunch uh, to feed her to kids, actually. Then, uh, let's visit our processing unit. This is Polabaladum solar dryer. After operating this unit for over five years, we found that it is very really useful. Solar energy is giving not only very clean energy, but also abundant. It's run automatically every morning after sunrise. No need to pay for energy. That is wonderful, isn't it? It's also, uh, can protect our products from our from any contamination, so help us move DMP easier. Drying is conventional process, which is used to preserve agricultural yield for longer shelf life. Some dry fruits can keep for over a year. It's simply it's too many. Drying a good quality is not easy anyway. When it's simply, so this unit can be located on any farm. No need technicians or engineers. Our fruit after harvest can be steadily dry. That lead our product are really fresh. Freshness is our key success factor. We plan to harvest and process one by one plant. So there are absolutely no waste from rockiness. We dry almost 100% of the harvest. When we are packing the legit one just for family and friend consumption, we do not allow our organic food to be lost. This is our water resources. Gill Living Camp adopts sufficiency economy philosophy of our King Pumipun to run our business. We are uh, uh, organically growing by utilize, utilizing our own resources. We are processing on our farm, packing and exporting by ourselves. This leads to self-reliance and sustainability. So during this pandemic, although our selling in offline market was declined, we are not impact much. This is because we have enough to support ourselves. That's all, thank you for your attention. Swadika. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Kulnati. Uh, you're just, uh, you still have 13 seconds actually. So <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, for our quiz, how long has Green Living Camp been using the solar dome? Okay, if you know the answer, type it on the chat box and uh, we will see when you go to Thailand, you can have free bananas uh, dried from the solar dome.
<laughs> okay, so our next speaker earlier we've had uh, we've heard from uh, the technology innovators that is Covestro, and then we we've heard from uh, the actual experience of a company and that is from the Green Living Camp. Now, as we always say, there's no such thing as free lunch, but th this can be very costly, right? So, from the side of um, the GIZ, uh, let us listen from uh, how the grants have impacted the community. So uh, let us now hear from Ms. Huang Ti Tu Huang to present to us. Uh, Ms. Huang Ti Tu Huang is the Senior Program Officer of the ASEAN Regional Economic Integration for the Project Office in Vietnam. So welcome Ms. Huang and the, the floor is yours now. Uh, thanks a lot and um, uh, hello everybody. Um, the presentation from GIZ, I would like to share more information or experience that GIZ has granted to the private sector company of Farmer Cooperative to provide uh, to implement innovative ideas. May I share my uh, presentation from my screen? Yes, please. Or, you may do so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, wait for a moment. Okay, um, just very brief introduction that uh, GIZ is a, a, a German company and uh, in Vietnam we working for more than uh, 25 years so no for 25 years and uh, we work based on the need of the of the of the government of Vietnam and you know that the government of Vietnam in 2012 we adapted uh, the green growth strategy which is the aim to foster the economic development while securing environmental and social sustainability. Can you hear that? Um, and GIZ in Vietnam working in three main uh, priority areas. One is about the environment and natural resource. Another working area is about energy, like a renewable energy, efficiency energy, and, and drier solar dome is a part of that, and vocational training. Talking about the green sector in Vietnam, we may be... The situation of the context in Vietnam may be similar to the other country in the East South East Asia, like a high vulnerability of climate change, sorry. Biodiversity conservation is a not effectively management. The climate change and green growth strategy and action plan not systematically integrated into sector policy or the uh, national provincial planning budgeting. And Vietnam also well known at the rapid economic growth and population growth, but we had to pay expense for for the rapid growth, and that is uh, um, the problem of the environmental issue. So, for the uh, green sector in GIZ, we are working in different project and program, but for the sustainable development of Vietnam. Uh, with the green sector, we uh, we have uh, I think we have a, a number of the project and program, including biodiversity, climate change uh, program, cost and water. And what I am talking further in the detail is uh, the program of the project under ASEAN a regional economic integration, and uh, in the re. Uh, Asian uh, regional economic integration, we have about eight different uh, regional projects. So we call the cluster of the project. With this, uh, we introduce the grant we call innovation fund or innovation of the, um, uh, the grant. 
and we're working in the coffee sector and we also working on the agricultural value chain sector why we had to we need to introduce the innovation fund uh, we know that to fostering uh, innovation and development in agri value chain is the required investment but then the result to fewer innovation and development are limited so if we introduce the innovation we can speed the, uh, stimulating the investment and opening opportunity for the private public partnership and enable the actor along the value chain for to access to the fund to implement the innovative idea for e quality improvement and ensuring contribution for sustainable and inclusive agro value chain development. So the main objective of our innovation fund is to foster market driven innovation and the innovation idea, including uh, the consideration of increased uh, resilience to climate change issue and innovation idea can be into the in the production in the processing marketing and market asset area in the agro value chain um, to meet the quality and sustainability standards with this innovation fund we're looking for the idea that can we can support the innovative practice system and tool enhancing existing a good technology and practice and we can support innovation and practice that are environmental friendly and support the climate change adaptation uh, with the innovation uh, fund we can support the partnership between the private and and public uh, organization and the contribution from the innovation fund from GIZ uh, budget usually not more than 50% of the total budget of the uh, innovative idea. And uh, is the scale of the budget is uh, really depend on the available budget. But then like uh, what we are working on the coffee, coffee innovation fund, we can finance up to 50,000 uh, euro per idea or per project. And with the other project, we, we uh, we contributed up to 40,000 euro. Um, then the innovation, we also looking for the innovative idea, which is to increase the business performance of the private company and leveraging the uh, private expertise and fund for policy role of the, uh, of the public partners and improve the livelihood, empower the, the youth and women in the value chain. So, uh, so this innovation fund, we uh, we target the different uh, target group, and if you see that here, we can uh, the target group for the fund can be small holder producer organization like a farmer cooperative or farmer uh, group, can be private company, a processor, exporter, can be retailer, or can be input and service provider. But those actors, if you see that is a uh, working along the value chain, those actors always had to involve. The, of the of the small scale farmer or the worker or youth and women in the in the in the business uh, to select the innovative idea we have a two round of selection and the first one we call pre-selection criteria and uh, for the pre-selection criteria we divided into two two group one is a technical criteria and another is a social environmental responsibility which is the criteria I had to fit to i will not mention here but then for the social environmental uh, criteria we we had to select the applicant which is the demonstrated commitment for sustainable inclusive business practice and willing to work with mutual benefit in the value chain and approach to con to, to reduce the greenhouse uh, gas emission or support re resilience to, uh, and adaptation to climate change and willing to share experience and learning with other. Mm -hmm. So, and, yeah. So, so the, the first one, if they met all the criteria that mentioned here, they can send, uh, submit the full proposal. And the second selection round, we call selection criteria and we have a five different group of the criteria including potential for impact innovation inclusiveness replica replicability and scalability 
So that is uh, what uh, the innovation fund has been introduced and, and applied in the two projects. And so far, we apply in two projects. One is uh, for in the coffee innovation fund, and it's a completed project. It has been implemented in 2019 and 2020. And another project we call Agro Innovation, uh, Agro, Agro Innovation Fund is uh, we are implementing until 2022, For Coffee Innovation Fund, there was uh, five um, candidates and idea was selected and implemented. The first one is uh, uh, the idea about the organic fertilizer production model, which is uh, they use the coffee has coffee skill and produce the organic fertilizer and then the, the cooperative they send they they supply to farmer at the end the farmer will send good quality coffee bean or, or coffee uh, cherry to the cooperative for further processing so both uh, win-win situation for the second case is uh, we 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 support the um, coffee production cooperative to produce uh, to to implement to invest in solar drying uh, dome so it can increase income from co coffee and not only coffee, also other agricultural products like they can dry the banana and other foods and even the uh, herbal material, medicinal material. The other idea is uh, to improve the uh, flavor spectrum of the coffee. Um, we also introduce other technology like a mobile soy testing. So that is uh, what's implemented and so far the 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 innovative project is still running uh, and we often check with the with the um, applicant and they running very well and also bring benefit to the farmer and and to private sector company for the second project we why as i mentioned that we are looking uh, in asian agri trade and there was for uh, innovative idea was selected and is will be up, uh, implemented in the coming month and the first we select the idea to building a sustainable supply chain of mango in one province based on advanced technology application in production and process, uh, post harvest so uh, so with this we support the company to to invest in a mango ripening facility and uh, for with ripening uh, facility, the mango will be ripping well, well, and then the farmer can increase the price at least 20% and get uh, and have a less uh, food loss after post harvest. The second idea that we support uh, Nanga Cooperative, that is a women list uh, cooperative to promote the post harvest processing of mango. We're using the solar dry dome in order to increase income for farmers through investment, involvement in mango processing activity and reduce post harvest loss of mango. And the other next uh, third idea is that we also working with farmer cooperative to apply new technology and new technique according to GAP standard, good uh, GAP standard to improve the mango. Huh? And this can improve the quality and outlook reduce a product lot and ensure uh, food safety and hygiene. Last uh, proposal was selected is uh, to apply the Internet of Things technology to send the nutrition of litchi plant. And we also introduce the gap in, uh, uh, standard to improve to improve productivity and quality of litchi value chain in also in Vietnam in production region of Vietnam. So far, uh, those uh, implemented idea or going to implemented idea the main objective as i mentioned before that the farmer is the end uh, benefits target group of, of the uh, of the project and we believe that with support through the intermediate actor is a private company or the farmer cooperative the farmer will benefit when they involve in the implementation uh, implementation and involve in the business of the of the private partners and uh, that's all for the presentation from CIZ and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Wan. Okay, um, so in the interest of time, let us proceed to the next, our next speaker uh, will share with us the appropriate post on oh, no, the farmers' organizations' initiatives on food losses and the current challenges about it. 
So let us all welcome the founder of Javara, Indonesia, Ms. Helianti Hilman. Ms. Hilman, please take it away. Yes, hello. Hi, everybody. How are you? Uh, can you hear my voice? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm just going to share the slides, just a minute. Um, Uh, is it feasible now? Yes, it's clear. Yes. Okay. Um, so I think uh, pretty much on the technology side and other things has been covered by the previous speakers. So um, allow me to introduce. My name is Helianti Hilman from Javara, Indonesia. Uh, so basically, uh, my uh, sharing will be more about how uh, we rebrand re the Indonesia's heritage food so that we can enter into the wider uh, market. And, and it's very important that even when we are introducing the local flavors that we also uh, adapting to the uh, global standards. So basically the company started 12 years ago because we, uh, we were so inspired by our food biodiversity heritage. Uh, the challenge is how to uh, bridge the gap uh, to the market and uh, bringing it forward uh, for the wider audience of consumers. So um, basically our value proposition is how we bring a product that are, you know, uh, bringing the, the heritage food is not only about romantic for us, but it's about uh, delivering a nourishing um, food for the consumers, uh, but also it's about uh, delivering a healthy quality um, livelihood um, also for the farmers itself. So this is a brief uh, video about um, Javara. Yeah, so that's uh, the company in more in a nutshell. Um, <clears throat> uh, so basically you can see that we have a, a wide range of products. Um, and uh, in addition to the exports that we've done to over 33 countries, um, as well as national distribution for the uh, supermarkets, uh, hotel, restaurant, and caterings, we also have our own uh, flagship store. Um, so basically what I would like to highlight here is 
when um, because our biggest uh, homework in the beginning was about rebranding the heritage food to making it relevant and contextual for the current market. Um, so a lot of uh, things that we have done, actually, we have to come up with integrated business model, because if anything missing in the supply chain, then the flow of the goods uh, or products to the market will not be happening. So this is where the issue of technical assistance, um, innovation, uh, adoption of technology comes in, because as you are aware that we also uh, are challenged with the climate change that um, changes the profile of how our food artisans are doing the production. So uh, when we do a rebranding of Indonesian heritage food, actually there are uh, some key elements that we have to adopt. First is that product innovation is definitely needed because we need to redefine the heritage food to be relevant to the consumers, uh, either current as well as the uh, future market. And then second is that standards and food safety um, certif and certification is very much needed uh, because it builds the credibility uh, and also opens the door for us to access the market, um, uh, the wider market. Uh, but I think also for us, it's very important to build the narratives uh, because uh, Javara is not only about selling the products, but also the story behind the product, the people behind the product, the philosophy behind the product. And our key element on our branding is actually our local wisdom as well as the food biodiversity. So uh, again, um, no matter how hard you do the branding um, of um, our company and our product brand, but if we don't have a good quality of the uh, products, it's impossible for us to be able to build our branding. So this is where the uses of technology um, for consistent quality and supply, as well as adapting to the climate change is needed. So this is also where we have our um, solar dome dryer basically is also help us uh, to adapt with the climate change because right now the, you know, the, uh, the raining season is, cannot be predicted um, as uh, in, in the past. So um, uh, the last things that we have been uh, experimenting is to create our own flagship store because we realize that bringing forward heritage food requires a lot of consumer education and it's important to give them a full experience in terms of the food culture of shop eat and learn. So we run a number of activities uh, in our um, flagship store, including food workshop, uh, uh, creating a pop-up uh, dining feast, uh, doing food culture tourism, as well as uh, farm visits. So practically, um, that's what I like to share for this afternoon. Um, and um, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Ms. Hilman. So thank you for that uh, sharing. And um, since we are running out of time, let's proceed to our next speaker who will share with us the appropriate post-production technologies and practices to reduce losses and maximize the benefits for various stakeholders. So to share with us, uh, let us all welcome Dr. Amelita Salvador, the Supervising Science Research Specialist from Social Economics Policies Research Division from PhilMEC, Philippines. So, Dr. Salvador, please take it away. Thank you. Good afternoon to each and everyone, or should I say good evening? Uh, let me share with you our power, my PowerPoint presentation for this session. Can you see now my slides? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, this afternoon, I'm going to share to you some of the uh, researches we had in FilmEC and uh, potential appropriate post-production technologies and practices to reduce losses and maximize benefits for various stakeholders. So before I begin with the topic, let me first introduce to you our office. So this is the first time I will be joining this webinar. So it might, might as well introduce what is FilmEC all about. FilmEC is stands for the Philippine Center for Post-Service Development and Mechanization. And we are a regular research agency or bureau under the Department of Agriculture. So 
we are mandated to generate, extend, commercialize, and deploy appropriate and proper problem-oriented agriculture and fishery post-harvest and mechanization technologies. We have our mission and vision here, the vision to be the premier center for post-harvest and mechanization development for a gender-responsive, globally competitive, and food-secure Philippines. Our mission is committed to modernize the agriculture and fishery sectors through increasing resource use efficiency and productivity, reducing losses and adding value to the produce through a partnership-based research and development, extension, commercialization, and deployment of appropriate post-harvest and mechanization technologies. So we have here the twin mandates of PhilMed. Uh, we conduct research and development in these areas of concern. And then out of the research findings we have, we extend this to our targeted beneficiaries. And in the long run, the effect would be efficient resource use, food safety and quality preservation, reduction in post-harvest, value adding, so that we can be globally com competitive and sustainable agri-fishery sector, so that we can provide the available and available food for the Filipinos as well as to other humankind. Okay. Uh, Filmec has completed researches on assessing food losses. And we had researches on cereal losses. We have established the post-production losses from harvesting, shelling, drying, and milling. We all, uh, in the cereal losses, we have established the losses for paddy and rice and corn. I will not dwell much on discussing how the, uh, the each of the losses for we only have a uh, few, uh, few minutes for this session. Uh, we also have completed research, researches on assessing fruits, losses, and waste, like mango, banana, the variety of Lakatan and Latundan, banana kaidaba, calamansi. And we also have researches on losses for vegetables such as eggplant, cabbage, bulb onion, and carrots. We also have uh, res other researches on root crops like cassava, sweet potato. We also have other uh, commodities aside from what I've just mentioned, you know. So uh, let me share with you how were we able to re uh, determine these losses, no? What did we do so that uh, we can share it to you how we determine this post-production process. So I will, since this uh, session is on the fruits and spices, I will share with you some of the results of the bulb onion and carrots. Okay. Uh, we identified first the value chain or supply chain of the commodity in, uh, in terms of the market and, market and handling routes. We identified the actors involved in each of the activities and we measured the losses using, using scientific pr procedure. And once we have established these figures of losses, that's the time we can have the potential interventions for each, uh, for each commodity. So take note that in every commodity, there's some uniqueness in handling the potential interventions to reduce these losses. Okay. So for example, the bulb onion from Bunga Bunga by Siha to Divisoria, we identified the handling routes. So Bungabun is famous for the red bulb onion. And from the farm, it's this, uh, the harvest is sent to the wholesaler traders assembly area for further sorting, packaging, and loading before it is placed in cold storage and marketed to the Visoria market. But in some, uh, some cases, the wholesaler traders directly sell after uh, packaging and loading, directly sell to these markets. So what are the post-production practices and operations that have undergone due to the red bulb onion? So under the farmer's level of activities, harvesting is done manually by uprooting the, the bulb of the onion and then pre-drying the twilight field once uh, after harvesting all of it, they will clean and trim the onions and then 
uh, spread it again for curing the field before sucking it using red bags. And then the farmers, after sucking it, this uh, produce will then be uh, uh, sent to the wholesaler traders area for further cleaning, blowing, sorting, and then bagging so that it will be ready for the cold storage. And in this system, uh, the cold storage was uh, lasted for six to seven months. Uh, then after seven months, the bulb onion was further cleaned again before it was distributed to the retailer and wholesalers. Okay, after the practices, we identified what are the sources of the losses. Yeah. These are some of the losses that we got, we've got from the onions, you know, we have pencil like, or we call it the lapis, rotten, oversized, immature, discolored, twin, or peeled bulb onions. So these are the sources and types of onion losses. No? Okay, after identifying those sources of losses, we summarize it in each of the factor and activities. So, for example, harvesting is done by the farmers, and we found out that the losses is around almost 24% quality losses, and physical is 3%. So, this is the losses are due to immature, peeled, and harvest, cut, or discolored twin uh, onions. Okay, on the point of the trader level, for the cleaning, we found out that there is a still added losses of 3.55% for the physical and 8.44% for the quality losses. And most of these uh, losses came from rotten, peeled, oversized. Then after storage for seven months, we found out that there's a weight loss almost of 24%. So summing it up, the losses obtained from bulb onion is almost 64% of the total harvest. You can imagine how large is this losses, okay. So how That's did we address this waste in this um, example? So the rejects brought about by discolored and oversized irregular sheet onions, we found out that there are some potential markets for minimally processed onions. So when we say minimally, minimally processed, the discolored or oversized bulb onions, are peeled and then sliced and then marketed to uh, some of our um, uh, what's it? Noodle, noodle packaging products. No? So there are buyers for this minimally processed onion. So meaning to say the, the rejects, which is considered as loss on the uh, value chain that we've considered as fresh uh, onions, it still can be, the loss is here, can be further reduced and use as raw materials to be processed for other products yeah, and at the same time, bring, this can bring. be marketed bring, as bring. additional source of income on the part of the farmers. So we've mentioned earlier, there's a high onion loss from cold storage. We are looking for potential alternative storage technologies using ambient temperature. So another example, just make it fast. The carrots is sold as unwashed and washed. And we found out that unwashed carrots has a lower losses compared to the washed. But for hygienic purposes, we have to uh, sell it washed. So we found out that this, from the farmer to the wholesaler retail le level, we have these losses. And this is due to bruise abrasion because the uh, during the cleaning process of the carrots, the surface is so soft. That's why it's uh, prone to bruises. So for now, we address these bruises by designing and developing carrot washer. And uh, we are trying to, uh, for the mechanized carrot washer to be tested and uh, to be scaled down so that uh, it could be useful for the farmer level. So in summary, it's just, um, I, what I just presented to you is just a snapshot of what we are doing at Filmec and the detailed activities for each of these losses and uh, commodity you can uh, ask the references I've mentioned in the presentation.
So in, in order to determine the appropriate post-production technologies and practices, we first need to identify the value or supply chain of that specific commodity. And then identify who are the actors and activities in each of the chain. Let them determine what are the sources of these losses. Quantify these losses so that actions that we can take to reduce these losses can be further uh, recommended. And to maximize the benefits, for example, what I've said to the, uh, the bulb onion, we can use those rejects as losses into coming up with other value adding activities for that so that the farmers can also have additional income out of those rejects from the uh, value chain I've mentioned. So with that, thank you very much. That's all I have to share for this afternoon. Thank you so much, Dr. Salvador. Uh, very interesting and uh, we're lucky. Uh, I'm a fan of carrots, so I think from now on, I will prefer to buy the unwashed carrots to preserve them longer. Okay, so I think uh, we are really running out of time. And so um, it's already 5, 16 p.m. and we are supposed to end by 5.30. That would be around 10 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. So uh, is it okay if we just uh, have the Q&A in the plenary instead of breaking out uh, into fruits and spices? And then let's just have, maybe we can entertain three questions on the floor before we proceed to the summary and closing. But don't worry because we're going to share the PowerPoint presentations that are presented today. And who knows, you might have a second webinar on this, no? because it's really a very interesting topic. So, okay, the floor is open now. For those who would like to ask questions, uh, the, the floor is open for three questions. So those who would like to ask questions, please, uh, you, you can ask your questions now. Okay, we have a question in the chat box. It is from Jiten Dressing Tomar. How much approximate cost is the approximate cost of a solar dryer dome? Okay, I think Covestro will be the most appropriate uh, organization to answer this question. Um, yes, so actually it's not a straightforward uh, answer to this uh, because depending on the size and the location, the solar dryer cost will be uh, different. So normally what we do is that we work with uh, the farmers or farmers cooperatives uh, to assess uh, the situation and the produce, help them to calculate uh, the um, a return on their investment uh, together because we already have established uh, a wide network in the region to locally build these solar dryers. Uh, so that is, uh, I, I, I prefer not to give a straightforward um, number here because this is really a, a case by case uh, kind of uh, situation. Um, and then um, like, uh, um, we, we have mentioned here, we also support the farmers and the farmers cooperatives to apply or SMEs actually to apply on, in different uh, uh, projects and uh, PPPs uh, uh, to help them on the funding side. Uh, so um, if you are interested in the solar dryer in your country, uh, please either reach out to uh, me or our members uh, or any contacts uh, in the country, and then they will provide you um, a quotation based on also your location. Thank you so much. I think that's a very clear answer. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Okay, we can entertain two more questions. Okay. Either you unmute yourself or you can also type your question on the chat box, whichever is okay. So are there any more questions? Because if not, uh, we will proceed to the next part of the program. So again, uh, we're going to share with you all these presentations and uh, the contact uh, details of our presenters. So if you have further questions, 
uh, on how to probably access the services, then uh, you can uh, have negotiations on a one on one basis. Are there add any other questions on the floor? Okay, I think Esther is raising her hand. Yes, thank you, Bernie. I have a question to Miss Amelita. Um, it's a very interesting presentation and science based with regards to the losses in carrots and tubers. So I want to know if the farmers are organized in, in the farmers that you work with. And uh, um, knowing that these are the problems in the, uh, these are the losses no, in their production. Have they tried, have they, ha did they have some initiatives no, on, on, on how to reduce this loss? Oh, thank you, ma'am, for that question. Uh, yes, ma'am, they are organized farmers. And initially, uh, more or less, they know already of these potential losses because uh, this uh, findings was is already uh, shared to them. And uh, initial, the initial, human initial findings on the losses, they have the idea. But um, in terms of uh, really monitoring, if uh, they already are doing something out of reducing these losses, uh, there's no, uh, what's that, uh, distinct uh, intention of monitoring if they have reduced the losses or not. That's all, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, we can see here from Covestro. Hi, Mr. Singh, the price depending on the... Oh, okay, that is an, a follow-up answer, no? To what uh, Ada shared earlier. Okay. Okay, so now we are up... To, we are now uh, entertaining one last question. So, going, going. If there are no questions, then we are going to summarize. We are going to call on our... Uh, our person to summarize the key points from this webinar. So, okay, going, going. If there, is there anybody who will unmute, unmute or type question? Okay, I think there are none. So thank you very much, our dear speakers. Very interesting. It was very difficult for me to stop you from your presentation because I myself would like to hear more. So, but it is my duty to do so. So I'm sorry for that. And I'm sorry for myself for having to stop you. And now let we are going now to the last part of the um, program. We are going to call on our cooperative program manager to share with us um, the summary and the takeaway points from our webinar today. So Jojo, Ms. Uh, Mr. Jose Romeo Ebron, please take it, take it away. Um, we don't hear you, Jo. Is there a problem with your um, audio? Bernie, can, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Now you're audible, okay. okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Please go yeah. on. So thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it's really a real pleasure and an honor no, to, to hear from our partners and as well as participants to this agricultural resilient to pandemics impact transforming food systems to reduce food loss and waste uh, webinar. So I would like, uh, I was asked to, to share the summary of lessons and recommendations. And uh, from the presentations, uh, I call it and consolidate it, but uh, of course, we're supposed to have some uh, breakout uh, session, but due to limited time, we're not able to do that. But uh, we're happy to receive uh, feedback so that we can integrate uh, all your comments uh, for this summary of lessons and recommendations. So without much uh, further ado, uh, uh, these are the summary of lessons and recommendations. Uh, first is uh, what are the key learnings and challenges? No? Uh, based on the initial presentations, we know that uh, around one 0.3 billion tons of food, roughly valued at around uh, USD 1 trillion, uh, are wasted no? uh, due to this uh, food loss and waste. Uh, and it also create, create uh, greenhouse gas uh, effects no? and footprints bigger than many countries. As presented by Acobestro earlier, 
uh, in, in Asia alone, uh, there are around 150 to 225 kilograms per year no, per capita that uh, resulted no, uh, to this uh, food loss and waste in uh, varying commodities, no, uh, spices, vegetables, tubers, etc. And globally per commodity, uh, there's an estimate no, that 45% uh, for fruits and vegetables were wasted and uh, earlier uh, Dr. Ami Salvador shared that in Pelmec uh, study, exam for example, in eggplant, uh, there's around uh, 0.15 no, to 35% uh, food loss no, for eggplant and for cabbage, from harvest to retail, uh, roughly around uh, 20 to 30% food loss. For roots and tubers, uh, there's also an estimate about uh, 45%. And for fish and seafoods, uh, there's an estimate of 35% are uh, lost no? uh, uh, to waste and uh, and from production up to uh, processing uh, up to the end consumers. We also learned that clean processing uh, can be related to good manufacturing practices. That's why there's an input uh, a lot on uh, uh, innovative uh, technologies no? like uh, the solar dome. And we also learned that reducing food loss uh, would strengthen the livelihood of farmers' organizations and agricultural cooperatives, as well as its farmers and the families. And the use of green technologies in agriculture is very important as carbon footprint is one of major contributor to climate change. And uh, to determine the appropriate post-production technologies and practices, this was shared earlier by Felmec, we need to identify the value chain, supply chain of the specific commodities. No, uh, as you shared uh, earlier about carrots, no, uh, from farm to the market. No, we need also to identify the actors and the activities in its chain, no, in its uh, uh, chain of the supply uh, chain, and determine the sources and quantify no? not only the source but also quantify the losses in each of the chain. To reduce food loss and waste can bring benefits to society such as increased productivity and economic growth, reduction in the greenhouse gases, increase in food availability to most vulnerable sectors. And uh, partnership building is crucial in providing investments and funding to support innovative ideas in addressing food loss and waste, such as technologies, rebranding, standards, marketing. And this was shared by JZ in Vietnam, and as well as from uh, Green Living. Uh, so there are a number of uh, uh, sharing that was that this was articulated no uh, the importance of partnership uh, building so our recommendations um, and we learned that uh, tackling food loss is essential to increase efficiency in the way our food is produced distributed and consumed as such uh, there are a number of recommendations uh, from this uh, webinar uh, first is for farmers organizations and agriculture cooperatives to enhance supply chain management as key factor in reducing food loss and waste. The use of losses, the, rather the use of losses and waste as raw materials for other value adding products. Uh, earlier we saw about the banana wine uh, or powder, coffee logs, no? the use of coffee ground for body scrubs no? and repellents, uh, maximizing classy vegetables for kimchi, carrot cakes. No? So, not, not only in terms of uh, the production side, but also in terms of enhancing you know, the, the, uh, uh, enhancing the processing of, each of these commodities. We also recommend uh, the transition from conventional production practices to innovative production practices. There are a number of experiences right now in new planting and harvesting methods and also farm diversification. It was uh, articulated uh, earlier. And the use of new green technologies such as mechanization, storage technologies, solar drying such as solar doom, value-added processing, etc. And to continue partnership among stakeholders, uh, especially the farmers' organizations and cooperatives with the private sector, no, like Cobestro, uh, government like the Felmec, and donors uh, like GIZ, in accessing such technologies and further strengthen efforts to address food loss and waste. So these are the, the five recommendations based on the sharing of, uh, of our panel and of our presenters. And we hope that uh, we can add more uh, as a result of the sharing, uh, your comments, email, or uh, from the chat. And, and so, uh, Bernie, uh, these are the recommendations and the summary of learnings. Back to you. Thank you. Yes. And good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joe. Uh, 
And these are very great takeaways. But for myself, next time I go to the market, I will look for the unwashed carrots. <laughs> okay. So now before we, uh, is has everybody downloaded your uh, background, the virtual background? So while we're still doing that, uh, our last part would be the photo ops, but before that, let us call on Miss Adawa to formally close our program before we take on our photo shoot. Thank you very much. Um, I think the summary and the recommendation was uh, so fantastic. I really don't have uh, much to add on to that, but I would like to uh, thank every speaker and every partner that we have invited today, including, of course, the amazing organizer, AFA, to uh, join forces here and discuss the food waste and the loss on this particular occasion. Um, and uh, as uh, Covestro's inclusive business, we work uh, tirelessly, not only on the technology part, but we really enjoy bringing all kinds of uh, people together, working with the government, with institutions, uh, with also donors and the farmers, the communities, uh, to really tackle these social issues. And uh, um, personally, I really enjoy today's event. And uh, thank you very much for everybody's participation again. Uh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. So now uh, we are uh, inviting everyone to please turn on your video so we can have a group photo, uh, proof that uh, there are human beings behind these windows. <laughs> okay, so uh, our official photographer would be Irish and um, uh, Junie. So please let us know if you are uh, which on which page you are. So keep smiling, put your best smile and keep it because we have, I think, two pages here. Okay, so who will give the cue? Is it going to be Judy or Irish? So uh, yeah, keep smiling for about uh, eight seconds. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much and see you again next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.